All right, let's look at Check Your Learning 8.3. I just want to look at questions 5 and 6. So question 5, figure 8, which is over here. We've got a metal square coil of a conductive material is sitting on a magnetic field or in a magnetic field, 150 milliteslas, so it's into the page. The coil has side AB, it's a square, so they're 5 by 5 by 5 and is moved sideways at 8.5 metres a second. So it's actually set up pretty similar to this one over here. But instead of moving just part of it, we're going to move the whole thing across. All right, so when this is moved, it's only this part, the BC and the AD, that will cut across the field lines. So it's only in those two parts of the coil that an EMF will be um, generated. In this part, AB and DC, they don't cut across. They're moving along here. And they're not going to cut across the field lines, so they're not going to generate any kind of an EMF. How much of, a generation, how much of an EMF is generated in AD and BC? Well, it's going to be the same in both. And if we look at Richard's answers, he's got an area calculation, which I was a bit confused about for a second or two, five centimetres by the velocity by the time. Now, we're not given the time only as a per second. So if we look back at the diagram, he's not calculating the area of this square. What he's calculating the area of is the piece to the side when this is moved across. All right, so five centimeters by, and this distance that it moves here is going to be the velocity by the time. We don't have a time, so we're just going to leave the time as t. All right, so that's how he's worked out his area there. Okay, then he's used his EMF formula. We've got good old, there's one turn. The magnetic field's not going to change. This is our changing area. And can you see now that the time doesn't really matter because it's going to cancel out anyway. You could, if you wanted to, set an actual time, but it's going to cancel, so it doesn't really matter. So you can just leave it as T. You could have made it 1 if you wanted to, and it would still cancel. So that's fine. So we get an EMF of 0. 0.064 volts. That's going to be generated in both AD and BC. Now the question is, will a current flow when this circuit is moved? So we know from our explanation earlier from this question that the current flowed up this way from B to A. Right, and remember I had to turn the book upside down to do that and I used FBI so my thumb goes in the direction that the movement took place, B is the magnetic field and I will be the current that's induced up the page. So you could do the same thing here and you'll get that the current is going to go from C up to B. And it will also go from D up to A. So the current is not going to flow around because it's flowing in the same direction in both of those parts of the coil. So they're going to cancel each other out. You're not going to get anything. Right. This one is interesting and unfortunately I think there is a typo in it. I don't think there should have been arrows on the front here. Right? Because it actually asks us to predict which way the current's going to flow. So just ignore those little arrows. If we look at this one, when the switch closes, the current's going to flow around here, round the back and across the front of that solenoid. So if this is my thing, round the back, across the front, I've got a north pointing upwards. So this is going to be north at the top so this is going to be south 
So in this coil, I'm going to produce a field which opposes that. So that means I'm going to have a south this end and a north that end. So that means that in fact the current is not going the direction of these arrows. The current is going across the front from right to left and around the back that way. Right, so the current is going the opposite direction. That's the answer for A. For B, propose what would occur if the switch is open and closed repeatedly. So this is going to happen, stop, happen, stop, happen, stop, happen, stop. So you will get the needle going backwards and forwards on the galvanometer as it tries to generate a current which opposes what's happening in here. All right, Richard's got an explanation there which is good. But this, these arrows are in the wrong direction. All right? And his answer has that, that they're in the wrong direction too. He just hasn't picked up that they're marked in on the solenoid.